Welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian and I'm streaming to you from beautiful Hungary here in Central Europe. I hope everybody is having a fantastic or has had a fantastic weekend so far. Uh, this is a members chat class. We're continuing with our task two essay. This task two essay could be for the academic, could be for the general. So in either case, make sure to Tune in and watch this essay finish. We will focus on the body paragraphs and the conclusion in this class. Of course, we will review the question and the introductory paragraph if you missed yesterday's class. Hi, Rodrigo. Hi, Preeti. Uh, while we wait for more members to join in, uh, again, this class is brought to you by aehelp.com for academic IELTS preparation, check us out at aehelp.com. And for the general version, check us out at g-i-e-l-t-s help.com. On both of these websites, we have loads of materials, interactive courses, and strategies to help you get those nice high band scores. Hi, Hassan. Hi, Awaz. Hi, Rajveer. Get to see more members jumping in on the class. Our websites, they look like this. This is the academic. Click the red button to join the premium package. And for the general, check us out here at gieltshelp.com. Click that red button. Thousands of students use our websites daily to improve their band scores. Of course, we have apps as well. The apps and the websites, they join, they link together, they integrate into one account. For Academic IELTS, download our app, Academic IELTS Help. And for General, General IELTS Help. Hi, Roshni. Nice to see you in class also. Again, if you have questions, just send me an email, adrian at aehelp.com, and I will do my best to promptly reply. Our books are available on Amazon. Search for AE Helps Academic IELTS or G Helps general outs for those. All right, everyone. So again, today, task two, we're going to finish the task two members that we started yesterday. And then we will do speaking part three, which will follow from uh, yesterday's uh, speaking part two uh, about an idea to help you think better. So both of these classes are connected with yesterday's classes. And if you miss those classes, it's okay you will be able to join in. Monday, Tuesday, no class. And then I'm back on Wednesday the 8th with a speaking part one. And then we have lots of classes coming up throughout the week. Um, Awaz, I did receive your email. I saw that come through to unlock your perks. So I'll be doing that later today. So expect an email from me later today, Awaz. And yes, I did see that email come through. All right. So writing students, I think most of you, we had lots of members in the class uh, yesterday, which is fantastic. And I think most of you were in that class. So uh, you have a good idea of what's going on. Uh, let's just um, read through the question, read through the introductory paragraph, and then we'll get right into our body paragraphs. Okay. So here we go. IELTS writing task two. You should spend about 40 minutes on this task. It is becoming more and more popular to buy goods and have them delivered without needing to go to stores. Discuss the advantages and disadvantages of this development. So basically, we all agreed we're writing about the advantages and disadvantages of online shopping as opposed to going to a physical store and getting merchandise right to the home or the office. Now, again, we need at least 250 words. Keep in mind that high bands like band seven, eight, nine, those will be closer to 300, band nine, probably even 350 words, okay? For a band nine level English user, which is an expert user of the language, uh, it's not that difficult to write 350 words in 40 minutes, all right? So keep that in mind. Okay, uh, we did a little bit of a different approach this time. Uh, we looked at the topic, then using the topic, we began the introduction by writing a hook. 
and then we followed through with the background and the thesis. So didn't focus so much on the preparation this time, but again, uh, I do definitely encourage you students and members to look at those lessons from the past where I focus more on preparation for the introduction because that's very important to practice. Okay, so here's our introductory paragraph uh, for this essay. This is what a band nine essay requires. There's a lot of false or weak information uh, online. And again, just for all of our viewers and all of our members, I know especially a lot of our members know this, but um, I do want to remind you of this just very quickly, okay? So careful for false and weak information regarding the introduction of task two essays. If you need to get a band score uh, seven or more, even a 6.5, so I'm gonna say 6.5 or more, you need a strong introduction, okay? And that's what I'm going to show you that we did yesterday. So again, careful for these false and weak uh, types of information regarding introductory paragraph. Um, uh, many people shop online and this has both benefits I'm going to do a bit of paraphrasing here, and deficits. This essay will discuss both of these um, sides in detail. Okay. So this is a weak introduction. It does not get high bands. Just by slightly paraphrasing the question and telling your reader that you're going to discuss this question, that's a weak introduction, okay, by any standard. In university, that's a very weak introduction. So in university, your professor will be very disappointed to read an introduction like this. But even in the IELTS exam, this kind of introduction, even with perfect English, will only count for about a band six, maybe, a band 6.5. So uh, be really careful with that. Okay, you need to understand that an introduction is much more than just paraphrasing a question and telling your reader that you're going to discuss the question. Okay, so a good introduction has a hook, it catches your reader's attention, it focuses, introduces the topic, it has a background, it has a thesis. Okay, so people buy millions of products online each day. Many individuals browse commodities on websites and make purchases using digital currency in order to have these merchandise delivered to their home or office. This new trend is having a major impact on people's daily habits and on global economic markets. Very nice direct thesis that tells your reader exactly what you plan to discuss in the essay. The most obvious advantages for online shoppers are saving time and money, while the deficits are customer service and counterfeit products, okay? So now your reader knows, okay, I'm gonna read a paragraph about saving time and money, and I'm going to read a paragraph about customer service and counterfeit products. Fantastic, or some paragraphs, okay? Now, let's get into body paragraph writing. Okay, so let's get into some effective body paragraph writing. Is everything clear so far, members? Any questions about uh, all of this information that I just gave you right now? So, is it clear? Do you have any questions before we get into the body paragraphs? I'm going to continue in the same style today as yesterday where we go back and forth sentence by sentence to just get some really good practice in back and forth, okay? Uh, Vishal, yes, I got your email as well. So don't worry, students, uh, I've gotten all your emails. You sent it to my address, I got it, okay? So Rajveer says that it is clear, thumbs up,
fantastic. Hassan says, yep, that's clear. Uh, Roshni says, it's good, good to go. All right. Rodrigo's on board. Fantastic. Again, if it's not clear, you can always send me an email, right? So uh, let's, um, let's do body paragraph one. Okay. Now, uh, body paragraph one, we're going to do it in this way. So topic, uh, sentence, explanation, example, plus topic sentence, explanation, example, okay? So this is going to be our approach because um, you see members, we have two points for each body paragraph. So the first body paragraph is the advantage. The advantage is saving time and saving money. So let's start by saving time, okay? So for your topic sentence, okay, that's going to be for saving time, saving time, topic sentence. I want you to define that for me. So not necessarily a, a very robust explanation, but a clear definition that introduces the idea of saving time shopping online versus going to the store. So give me a nice full sentence that tells your reader the idea of saving time by shopping. You don't need to explain it yet. You just have to clearly define that. Okay. So define it. I'm going to do the same and don't worry about saving money. We're not worrying about saving money. Okay. So for Dov says, in this hustle and bustle life, everyone tries to keep their time and savings. Okay, um, we're just talking about saving time here, not money for Dov, so just on one, okay? Okay, so uh, Rajveer says, firstly, online customers do not need to spend their time to go to a store to buy their items, not bring their items. I get what you're saying, Rajveer, but to you go to the store to buy your items. Okay. And I wouldn't say supermarket. Supermarket Rajveer is like a grocery store for most English speakers. So I would just say store in general. It could be an electronic store. It could be another type of store as well. Okay. Um, again, keep your thoughts simple. So remember what I said yesterday, thinking Simple is not easy, but it's very important. Okay, so all right. Hassan says, undeniably, purchasing online merchandise reduces time, um, which uh, is spent on brick and mortar uh, shops. Uh, brick, Hassan, it's called brick and mortar. Okay, the, the term that you're looking for there, Hassan, is brick and mortar. Okay. Uh, brick and mortar. Mortar is the material, Hassan, that's between the bricks that you use to stick the bricks together. Uh, mortal it has a very different meaning. So careful with um, your words. Otherwise, you lose marks in the exam. Uh, Rodrigo says, time is a precious asset that all individuals value these days. Uh, Rodrigo, I think that's understood. It's um, too general uh, to uh, state at this point. Uh, yes, of course, time is valuable. Uh, if you're writing a really long essay, like 500 words or 1,000 words, that's not for the IELTS, you might go that direction. But here you need to be more focused. Uh, take a look at my topic sentence. So it takes a fraction of the time to buy a product online and have it at home than getting it in a physical store. Okay, so saving time, what do you mean? 
I can say this in a simpler way. I'm just showing you a band nine level sentence. So I could say it takes much less time to buy products online and uh, get them to the home than from a shop. Okay, so I can say that simpler. I'm just using a little bit of uh, higher level vocabulary with it takes a fraction of the time, but you could say it takes much less time. Okay, and you can still get a band seven, eight for sure, 8.5 even, all right? Using simpler vocabulary, but expressing yourself very clearly, okay? So it takes a fraction of the time to buy a product online and have it at home than getting it in a physical store. That's a definition of saving time in this context, okay? Preeti says online shopping saves time um, to and from the physical shops. Preeti, your sentence is confusing because you're giving an explanation. So I think what you're trying to tell me is that I don't need to use time to go to the shop and come back. But that's your explanation. That's what we're going to write after this. Okay. So here the person is saying, okay, well, why? Why does it take a fraction of the time or why does it take less time to buy the product online than in a physical store? And that's where you can explain yourself, Preeti, that while you don't need to get into your car to go into the shop, you don't have to walk around this large store to find the item that you need because the computer is much more efficient. You just type in the search word, right? So the explanation's coming next, all right? Awaz says, it is easy to buy goods remotely by browsing the internet, which saves time, while physical uh, shopping can take hours. Okay, Awaz, you're on the right track. You're also kind of leaning into the explanation, but I like how you're using quantitative language with hours, so you're on the right track. Welcome to the class, Jaskaran. Jaskaran says, online shopping, customers have more options to choose products with different varieties and discounts, just run your off topic. And we're talking about saving time. We're not talking about choices and we're not talking about discounts. That's coming later. Okay. So be really careful. Students have clear structure in your essay. Okay. Uh, write the explanation. Okay. So, uh, think about me. I'm your examiner. I'm your IELTS examiner. I'm your reader. I just read your sentence. It takes a fraction of the time to buy a product online and have it at home than getting it in a physical store. Um, what do you mean? How do, does it, don't the products take days to get to your house? So what do you actually mean by this? Okay, I'm an alien. I just came to earth from another planet. I have my little antennae, big eyes. Ooh, online shopping, uh, tell me about it. I'm smart. I can understand you. I just don't know what's going on because I'm not from planet Earth. I'm from Mars. So give me the explanation. Okay. I'm going to do the same. So I'll explain. Uh, you go first. All right. So. All right. 
So let's see what you have. Um, keep typing, keep going with your explanations. Uh, this is what I wrote. So the personal time invested in purchasing via the internet is usually minutes, as where the same process takes hours in a brick and mortar shop. There is no need to commute and search large stores. Instead, shoppers just use keywords, select pay, and the product arrives usually within a week. So depending on your English fluency and your speed, you can go into a lot of detail to give clear explanations. If you're going for a band seven, you might not even write this sentence here. Okay, so my essay is going to be around 315, 320 words because I'm showing you a band nine level essay. In fact, if I were sitting in the aisles, I might even add in the concept that there is no need to commute, comma, search large stores, and wait at the checkout counter. So I can even write the wait at the checkout counter or wait at the cashier. But that's if you're really confident, you know you're a band nine, and you can give that level of explanation. So careful not to over explain, stay within your time limit and your fluency. That's really important, okay? Make sure, members, that you're clear on that. So time your 40 minutes, okay? All right. Hassan says, just browsing a product, an individual decides to purchase and click buy. That's all the process of online shopping while physical stores need people to visit the location, choose their products, and wait at the checkout counters, right? That's the other big one, visualize students, right? So I know that a lot of us like online shopping because we don't like to stand in these large queues or lines and be like, doo, 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 doo. I'm playing with my phone, I'm at, can I just pay and go please? Um, so yeah, keep that visual information always, okay? Ferdov says, humans purchase products sitting in the comfort of their homes um, through their computers or smartphones with free delivery. Okay, sure. Uh, Ferdov's, again, stay on track, right? Rajvir says, people just need to click a few buttons to buy their products within 40 to 50 seconds and they need not take their vehicles to reach the retail stores and wait in long lines at the cashier. Right, Rajvir? Good. Yeah, there you go, Rajvir. I just saw that same sentence pop up in your own words. Perfect. That's how I would finish that. Oas says, people have access to buying products 24-7 from any location in the country and they need just a PC or their mobile phones. There is no need to go out. Um, Awaz, I would say that your explanation is better if my topic is about convenience. So um, saving time and convenience are similar, but they're not exactly the same. Uh, if I would have said in the thesis that online shopping is more convenient, then that's the kind of explanation I would write. But for saving time, I would make it clearer for my reader what I mean by where I actually save my personal time. Is that clear, Awaz? So using good logic, students, stay really tight on the topic that you're discussing, okay? Roshni says, individuals can buy products with four easy steps um, within five to six minutes with the help of technology compared to shopping, which takes hours. Just keep it simple, Roshni, which takes hours, okay? Um, Preeti says, online shopping does not need a car or walking to a large shopping area to choose products. It takes just a few minutes to buy and select merchandise through the internet. Absolutely, Preeti. Good. You're on the right track. Okay, now I want to give an example. Okay, and this is third person. So remember, students, members, your thesis statement always shows the voice of the essay. So we're not using I, me, my. The thesis does not include the word I, me, my. It does not use first person voice, doesn't talk directly about my life. So 
Notice that there's no I, me, my in the thesis. That means that I have to make sure my explanation or my example uh, does not use the words I, me, my either, okay? So I want to give um, just some kind of a made up example that represents this concept of uh, saving time uh, shopping online, okay? So just make up some phony statistic or a phony example, um, up to you. I'm going to do the same and then we'll compare, okay? All right, so oh, that's mine. I just kind of came up with it. Um, a recent study estimated that in 2019, online shopping led to over 5 billion hours less commute time than if those products had been purchased in stores. Okay, so just making it up. Sure, why not? It's uh, believable. There's 8 billion people on planet Earth. A lot of us do uh, shopping online throughout the year. We go to stores near and far uh, if we don't have a chance to buy those products online. So we could probably say that roughly 5 billion hours, nobody's going to care. Your examiner doesn't care. If I'm your examiner and I read that sentence, I would just say, hey, that's great. Sure. Why not? I believe you. Give you a good band score. Okay. Uh, for Doves says, for example, nowadays many individuals buy smartphones online and they save uh, several hours, um, and or you can just say an average for Doves. So, uh, like this for Doves. For example, nowadays many individuals buy smartphones online and they save an average of three hours compared to buying in stores. Okay or retailers, physical at physical retailers, right? For Duff, so again, students, remember, quantitative language, right? Numbers, numbers, get those numbers into your explanations and your examples. Hassan says, in 2015, a study by MIT revealed that online shopping can save uh, time by 40% in comparison with conventional ways um, when people uh, purchase their items online. Uh, and then you go into more explanation, Hassan, for five years, that means they add an extra 10 days to their life. That's pretty interesting, Hassan. I like it. Um, careful. I mean, Hassan, if you feel like, okay, I can get all this information down in 40 minutes, fine. If not, maybe finish a little bit earlier, Hassan, and then spend a few minutes on proofreading your work, just making sure you don't make mistakes. Because Hassan, if you're writing with good grammar at this level with this information and you get to 300 words, you'll get a band nine, okay? So if you have an extra 30 words, but you're making grammar mistakes, then they'll give you a band 8.5, right? So you have to find that happy balance, okay? Uh, Awaz says 70% of young people nowadays prefer this type of shopping due to their busy life. Um, yeah, Awaz, okay, again, um, so we're showing preference for the shopping, but it's closer now, so it's a good example. Awaz, I recommend not starting sentences with numbers. It's usually avoided at the higher level uh, of uh, English literature, so... 
uh, a study shows or a survey revealed that 70% of young people, young people is with uh, a small y, okay? So good concept was have a little bit of a leading expression before the number, okay? Uh, Rajveer says, for instance, a local newspaper in India stated that 60% of citizens buy products remotely as it saves an average two hours of shopping time per week. Right, Rajveer? So I would finish that with two hours of shopping time per week. Okay. All right. Uh, doing a fantastic job. Now we get into our second topic sentence. Okay. Our second topic sentence um, will deal with um, uh, saving money. Okay. All right. This second half of the um, body paragraph one, I'll leave that for you to do for homework. Okay, members? Instead, let's jump to body paragraph two. All right? So we're going to jump to body paragraph two, which is the disadvantages. And uh, let's do the topic sentence for this one together. Okay? So don't worry about saving money, which is the second half of your... Um, your paragraph, let's go to uh, body paragraph two. Hi, Raja. I'm glad you joined our membership. Uh, send me an email and I'll hook you up with those exclusive videos, okay? So send me an email and I can give you a link to those exclusive videos. Okay, so again, let's look at our thesis. The most obvious advantages for online shoppers are saving time and money. So I'm leaving money because I want you to do that uh, thinking about what we just did with saving time. So let's look at the deficits for body paragraph two. Body paragraph two, uh, customer service. So we're saying, okay, well, one of the negatives of online shopping is customer service. All right. So again, topic sentence, give me a definition for customer service in this context. So online shopping, the negative is customer service. What do you mean, right? So what does that mean? Um, give, me a, give me a nice topic sentence. Okay, so I'm trying to keep my hints simple in this case, so I don't give you too much information, but this is what you should be thinking about. So body two, topic sentence, define the concept of lower quality customer service for online shopping. So yeah, it's already kind of a definition, so I'm really leading you, but uh, give me your own sentence. So define that. Okay, again, keep it simple. Yeah, so Hassan says the downside of online shopping is bad customer service. Um, Hassan, I probably wouldn't say bad customer service because that's not necessarily true, but maybe using something like lower quality or less customer service, right? Would make more sense, I think. Although I must say, I'm really impressed by Amazon's customer service. Um, for Dobb says, people who purchase online have a deficit when it comes to customer services. Um, yes. Okay. Uh, try to think, students, also about what does it mean, customer service? So can you say the words or the idea of customer service in a different way, maybe? Give another paraphrase or a concept of customer service. Awaz says the negative sides of online shop is that poor customer service in most cases. Okay, poor is 
close to bad I was, but it's a little bit better. So poor is poor is okay. I wouldn't use bad, poor, it's okay. Rajveer says, online shoppers do not get the required support instantly as compared to physical shop. Very nice, Rajveer. So customer service is getting support services. Uh, nice paraphrasing, Rajveer. So uh, take a note of Rajveer's um, uh, topic sentence, students. It's a good one. Online shoppers do not get the required support instantly as compared to physical shopping. Yes, very good, Rajveer. Uh, Rodrigo says, on the other hand, people who choose to buy online will face lower quality customer service. Um, Rodrigo, good. One really important correction, Rodrigo. Uh, what is that? Some members should notice. Uh, what's the correction uh, in, um, in that I'm going to suggest for Rodrigo? It's a very important correction, and I want everybody else to recognize this as well hi mary thank you for that super chat donation if you want to be a member mary um you have to um yes roshni will uh you have to click the um join member button mary okay yeah roshni you're right so using will yeah using will very good roshni you got it very quickly we don't want to jump to the future tense rodrigo so keep it present tense so it's general truth Okay, so um, it would read better like this, Rodrigo. On the other hand, people who choose to buy online face lower quality customer service. Just take the word will out of the sentence. It's, it's not needed. Okay, as soon as you say will, people start thinking, oh, in the future. But no, it's not the future, it's now. Okay, so in essay writing, it's very important that you're not jumping around with present, future, past. It can become very confusing, so be really careful. Okay, so certainly one of the downsides of uh, remote shopping is that customers do not receive the same level of support as when buying merchandise in physical shops or give you another way to say this here through retailers okay All right, so I'm using a combination of those good points um, from Rajveer and a couple other students. So uh, certainly one of the downsides, downsides is one word. So certainly one of the downsides of remote shopping is that customers do not receive the same level of support as when buying merchandise through physical retailers. Great, okay, I'm an alien. What do you mean, <laughs> right? Why not? Why can't I get the same type of help? What's missing, right? Visualize it. So what do you get in a phys physical shop when you buy goods that you just simply can't get when you're clicking online? What is that, okay? So here comes your explanation. All right. So give me a nice, clear explanation. Think about it. If you're explaining this to an alien that's smart, they can understand you, they have good logic, what can you tell them where they go, oh, okay, so that's why you might still choose to go in to a shop. And again, if you visualize it, I believe there's one very clear um, point with customer support that you'll realize that you'll never be able to get um, no matter how advanced our technology is uh, through online shopping. So Ferdov says people who are purchasing products online cannot be helped and receive good recommendations instantly. Um, yeah, for Dobbs, I, I don't know if I agree with you because I there are a lot of online stores now have live chat 
and you can actually um, chat with uh, representatives for the store and they can actually give you recommendations in the chat almost instantly. So in some cases for Dove's, yes, but in some cases these days, uh, certain online shops have actually gone the distance of having real time interaction with sales representatives. So you're right, we're not there yet, but almost. So what else? What else would be something that we can't do the same? Okay. It's not bad though for Dobbs. I'm just really kind of poking and picking away because again, we're really looking for that band nine level English communication and logic, right? Band nine needs all of that together. It needs English. It needs logic. It needs communication. And keep this in mind, students, if your English isn't that strong, but you have really good logic, really good communication, you can still get a very high score on the IELTS exam using simple language because you might lose some marks for lexical resource or grammar if you don't have a lot of grammar range or a lot of vocabulary, but your coherence and accuracy scores can be really high if you have good logic and communication. So you can still get a band seven. Okay. That's what I keep telling everyone. IELTS is much more than just a test of English and you can advance all of those skills. Okay. So, um, <clears throat> All right, I'm going to keep it like that. Um, so clearly it is impossible to test out products through online shopping, like in a physical shop, which may lead to unexpected negative outcomes. Okay. So I just kept it simple. And then again, I can add more to it. Um, So I can add another sentence to give even more clarity. Okay. Uh, there we go for Dobbs. That's much better. Okay. I love it. So you took that one extra step for Dobbs visualized more. So for Dobbs says, uh, buyers cannot be supported face to face communication and by face to face communication, which is important to make the right decision. Yeah, I agree for Dobbs. So that's better. That's much more in line with what I'm saying here as well. Okay, good. Nicely done. Okay. Um, Rajveer says while shopping online, people have to virtually see items to place their orders. There is no guide and quality check facilities available, which are possible in the case of retail shops. Yeah. So Rajveer, I think you're thinking in the same domain as well, right? Um, Hassan says regularly unprofessional customer services that do not meet buyers interest lead many shoppers to go with physical shops. Okay. It's not bad Hassan, but I have to put a lot of my own, uh, visualization and interpretation behind your ideas to make sense of what you're telling me. And that's kind of the trick students when you're thinking about how good is my explanation? 
okay? You should, when you read your essays, ask yourself that question. How good is my explanation? Okay? A nice way to test that theory is give it to your friend or your sister or your brother or your parents and get them to read it and then ask them, okay, what am I telling you? What am I explaining? Right? If it's not clear, then you might want to revise the way you write your ideas. Uh, one way you can test it for yourself is ask yourself, okay, I just read this explanation. How much thinking does my reader need to do to understand what I'm actually telling them here? Okay. If they don't have to think much, and that's ironically the way the world is today. If your reader doesn't need to think, it's just very clear. They're like, okay, A plus B equals C. It's clear. Then you have a very good explanation. If A plus B equals C, maybe D, but it could be an F, then rethink your explanation. Okay. Awaz says, online shoppers do not have face-to-face -face communication while in physical shops. Special employees help clients make the right decisions. Finish the sentence, Awaz. Uh, otherwise, good. Keep the C small. Okay. Fantastic. Okay, um, so clearly it is impossible to test out products through online shopping, like in physical shops, and get feedback from store experts. And this may lead to unexpected negative outcomes okay uh, and then i can take out this sentence here so making it a bit more concise all right uh now um an example okay so give me a nice example for this explanation. So again, your reader's going, all right, okay, I got you. So one of the downsides of online shopping is that the quality of customer service or customer support is less than that in physical shops. Why? Because I cannot communicate with an expert in the store and try out the product before making the purchase. Okay, can you give me an example of what you're saying here? All right. So can you give me an example where people are often disappointed when they buy products online where they buy, they can't really choose the right product. Okay. So give me an example. All right. Rodrigo, those are some good explanations. Rajveer says, in few cases, shoppers just have to switch to offline mode for shopping due to the absence of required assistance. Um, give me an example, Rajveer. Again, visualize. Uh, here's the question I would ask myself, okay? So quick, high quality thinking students. The question you want to ask yourself is what are products that I still don't buy online? So what are products that I still usually go to the store to buy? Okay. And then think about that, answer that question, and then put that into an example. So Hassan says recently, the New York times published a study which claimed that more than 10% of online shops in the USA had closed due to unprofessional services for their customers. Okay. That works Hassan. Sure. A statistic published uh, in the New York Times that says 10% of online shops close due to unprofessional services. Sure, that works. Okay. Your, uh, remember, students, that your examples should try to support your explanations clearly. Okay. So here I'm talking about not being able to test out the product, get some feedback. So this can lead to some disappointment. Okay, I definitely have one in mind. Okay.
All right. There we go. So what comes to mind for me is definitely uh, clothing, right? Clothing. I think for most of us, we're still a little bit apprehensive when we buy clothes or shoes online because most people still like to just test it out. And I know from personal experience, I've definitely been disappointed a couple times with either the size or the quality of clothing that I purchased online, right? So, uh, and again, clothing is where we use a lot of customer service. So we have a lot of questions for the retailers about colors, sizes, the quality of the material, the guarantee on the clothing. So um, a business article claimed that clothing bought online is twice as likely to be returned to retailers as when they are bought in physical boutiques, since either the sizes or are wrong or customers do not get what they expect or what they expected. Both are okay. All right. Uh, Hassan or Awaz says, uh, taking Alibaba as an example, people order products such as t-shirts, which probably do not fit them. Delivery time can be disappointing as well. Awaz, beautiful. I didn't read yours before I wrote mine, but it looks like we're thinking the same. Uh, Rajveer says, for instance, as uh, per a news broadcast, online experience of electronic items declined by 40% in 2019 as people were unable to find the required quality products. Very good, Rajveer. Uh, electronics can definitely be a good example also. Okay. Uh, Hassan says, yeah, clothing can be super shocking when you buy it online. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. So uh, members uh, here, the second half of this paragraph would be about the next topic sentence. So it would be in addition or another shortcoming of online shopping is and then uh, counterfeit products okay so this is the second element of your homework and for those who have time and are really studious try to finish the conclusion as well okay i'm going to do that over the next couple days so i'll finish up these body paragraphs i'll do a nice conclusion and then I'll post it on the YouTube community board on the channel, okay? But I think that you're doing a great job, members. So again, uh, you have the right idea now. It's a matter of practicing, increasing your fluency, your time, use of time, and um, making sure that you stay focused on the topics and go into nice detail depth of information for all of our viewers learn from the right materials for IELTS success. We have lots of success stories from students around the world who engaged our materials for even just a few weeks or a month and have truly uh, not just received better band scores, but improved their uh, communication and English skills immensely. So uh, check us out at aehelp.com for academic IELTS, G-I-E-L-T-S help.com for general IELTS. And uh, in 30 minutes, I will host another class where everybody can chat. So everybody will be able to join the chat as well as members. That will be speaking part three, following from yesterday's speaking part two. So make sure to join that class and I hope to see you there. Much love from Hungary in Central Europe. Bye for now. See you soon.